All right, I think we're going to go ahead and get started. So thank you everyone for attending today. My name is Brandon Grant. I'm the marketing director here at QuoteWorks. And today we're going to be demonstrating the new releases, uh, the new features that are in version 5.4 builds two and three. Uh, for those of you that are new to our webinars, uh, this is kind of the outline that we follow. We'll do a short PowerPoint presentation, just kind of go over some of the new features that are available. Um, we'll do a live demo of those features um, from build two and three so you can kind of see how everything works. Uh, and then we'll take some questions at the end. Um, some housekeeping things, you'll see there is a questions uh, section in the GoToWebinar uh, title bar. So if you do have questions or you need assistance, uh, definitely type your questions in there. And if I don't answer them immediately, I will circle back at the end of the webinar and uh, answer those for you and take care of those for you. So, um, Okay, so let's go ahead and get started. Um, so in this release, we had 39 new features. Uh, we had 40 fixes and 14 miscellaneous features or kind of like smaller features uh, that were added. Uh, some of the integration updates. Um, so uh, one of the biggest ones is gonna be, we have a brand new CRM integration for Zoho. Uh, so for any of you that are using Zoho CRM, uh, that is now available in uh, the latest version of QuoteWorks. Uh, this will also include um, support for any of the versions of Zoho. Uh, you just need to be on the professional or corporate edition of QuoteWorks in order to use integration. So this will work for any of the versions of Zoho, but you need to be on pro or corporate in QuoteWorks in order for this integration to work. For those ConnectWise users, um, we have added um, support for 2019.2. Um, we actually added that a couple months ago. Uh, so if you've been waiting on that, it is out. Um, it's available now. So uh, definitely update to latest and you'll have access to that. Uh, for our Sugar users, uh, 8.3 is officially supported now, so you have access to that. And same thing for the Maximizer CRM users, 17.1 uh, is fully supported as well. And then uh, for Salesforce users, um, we do have the integration option for using profit amount versus a sale amount in the opportunities. Uh, that's available, so um, you can edit your existing Salesforce um, in, uh, setup information, and that'll have, um, that'll have that option available. And then for those of you that are using ACT, uh, if you are using ACT 2005 through 2009, we do recommend updating to a later version of ACT as we are going to discontinue support for those versions of ACT specifically. So if you're running ACT 2010 or later, you'll be fine, you, no, nothing you need to do. Um, but if you are running one of these versions of ACT, you will wanna update to uh, a, a newer version uh, just because we are gonna be um, essentially sunsetting that ACT integration. Uh, the reason we're actually doing that is because we are rewriting the ACT integration and the features, some of the features that we're adding to the integration are not available in these previous versions of ACT. So um, we're only gonna be supporting essentially from 2010 and on. So, so make sure you get that updated before that comes out. Uh, probably looking at a couple months still, so, so you have some time to uh, kind of plan and get that, uh, get that settled. So what's new? Um, biggest thing that's gonna be in this uh, or one of the biggest features that's gonna be in the uh, latest release is going to be the Zoho CRM support. Um, so with our Zoho CRM integration, you're gonna be able to create and update deals in Zoho, uh, search and pull contact information from Zoho directly into QuoteWorks. Uh, we also support the ability to attach uh, link documents and other documents uh, to the Zoho deal. And then we also added full data link functionality. So if you are using the data link or want to use the data link, that'll be available for the Zoho CRM integration as well. Uh, we're going to go through a full integration with this today. Um, we'll also have some videos and some more uh, help file topics uh, available also. So just uh, make sure you check that out if you do have questions about the integration. Uh, new, um, brand new product content subscription users have access to Amazon as a product source. So this is a this brand new integration. Um, and then what this will let you do is actually search for Amazon. So just like if you went to amazon.com and search for items, you'll be able to do that directly inside of QuoteWorks. Uh, you'll be able to search by um, pretty much anything very similar to Eatalyze where you can search by keywords, part numbers, descriptions, um, pretty much anything. Um, it'll show you if it's prime eligible. Um, and then if the uh, part number does exist, like the manufacturer, you'll actually be able to cross-reference it with, um, with Eatalyze also. So you can see what vendors are also um, selling and offer that item. So uh, we'll go into um, a lot more detail here in just a few minutes when we actually go through the demonstration. Uh, for right now, it is only available for US users. Uh, it's just the way it's set up. Um, if we have a pretty high adoption rate, then we'll be able to open it to um, other countries. But yeah, for right now, it is just going to be 
for the uh, for US users. Quotworks documents bar, um, you'll see this um, as you start updating your installations of Quotworks, you'll see this kind of um, up at the top above your Quote workbook, you'll see these new um, tabs essentially. Uh, and this makes it really easy to view your currently open documents so you can see how many documents you have open. Um, you can cycle between them uh, very easily. Um, you'll even be able to like rearrange windows in the document. So we'll walk through all those features today, but it's a really, really cool feature um, that's available in the latest release as well. Uh, for Sugar users, um, if you are on enterprise version of Sugar, you now have the ability to write line items into the Sugar opportunity. Um, we also supported bi-directional data links um, for opportunity line items, um, as well as rolled support for those line items, um, and the part number generation macro. So um, if you are using Sugar Enterprise, uh, you'll have some um, quite a bit of new functionality that's available to you immediately. Uh, and like I said, this does support up to 8.3, um, so you'll be able to use this with the latest version of Sugar. Uh, for you Autotask users, uh, we did add some um, cool new little features. Um, the Quote Valley sales rep facing URL uh, will now be added as a note in the Autotask opportunity. Uh, why that's really nice is that one, it doesn't require any setups, so there's nothing you need to do. So if you're using Quote Valley to deliver your documents to your customers um, and you have QuoteWorks integrated with Autotask, we'll actually take the sales rep facing URL and automatically add it as a note in your Autotask opportunity. So this makes it really easy to uh, just view that document if the customer posts a comment or you just wanna maybe post a comment or just kind of check in on the document, um, see what the customer's been up to, you can easily do that directly from this link. In addition to that, uh, we also added the link to the QuoteWorks web document. So if any of you are using QuoteWorks web with Autotask, you'll actually be able to see a direct link with that Autotask, uh, or as a note in that Autotask opportunity with a link to that QuoteWorks web document. So again, it's just a nice little shortcut there in the opportunity. So definitely check that out. Um, like I said, really, really great features because you don't, there's no setup involved. You don't have to do anything. They just are now available and you can start using them immediately. Some QuickBooks integration updates. Uh, one of the biggest ones is going to be the non-modal window. So you can actually open up the QuickBooks export window in non-modal mode. Uh, basically what this means is that you won't have to um, close everything out before you start exporting over to QuickBooks. Um, it's also really nice because um, we added some new features where when we group items together, uh, the information that we're sending over to QuickBooks is a little more clear. Um, when you're sending items over as a bundle or the individual items, you'll actually have more descriptions available so you actually know what's being sent over. So this one will be a little bit easier to understand uh, once I actually show you, um, but it is actually some, uh, some really nice features that we added. Uh, one thing to note about the integration update is that when you're exporting over to QuickBooks, um, it is best practices just to close your documents, especially if you're, ex um, if you're exporting one of the open documents, because anything that you change, um, once it's exported, you'll have to re-export. So just to keep everything, all the data correct, you'll just want to um, close out of any document that you might be thinking of exporting over to QuickBooks. Uh, similarly, the purchasing module has been updated. Uh, where it's also a non-modal window, which basically means you can leave it open. You can even minimize it so you don't have to close out of it. Same thing, if you're going to be processing orders and um, placing online orders, you just want to make sure you don't have those documents open or making changes to those. Um, we also added some new functionality with um, a right-click menu option of opening the document so that you can quickly open a, um, a document that a line item's in. Um, the customer PO number is now a search field on the ordered items tab. We also added a serial number search field, which is really, really useful when you're looking for a very specific item. Uh, and then we have um, added the ability to adjust serial numbers. Uh, so if you put in a new serial number, maybe you typed it in wrong, um, you know, just mix up a couple numbers or put them in the wrong order, you'll be able to make those changes now. You can even unreceive. So if you marked an item as received that you didn't mean to, we can actually backtrack that. So um, some cool new little features that are available for you to start using immediately in the uh, purchasing module. Uh, Quote Valley, um, really nice feature here is on the Quote Valley dashboard, we actually included a new checkbox that says show activity. Uh, this will allow you to kind of um, quickly look at your notifications in your inbox and then choose whether or not you want Quote, QuoteWorks to display the Quote Valley activity history. Uh, so we do it by the default every time you click on one of the notifications in your inbox. But if you're just kind of like maybe you've already looked at all of them and you just want to start dismissing them, you can actually quickly go through and start dismissing the notifications without, help, without having to uh, wait for it to load. So. 
And then some new miscellaneous features, um, probably a couple of the biggest ones is the ability to um, see the, um, the template in the title bar. Um, so we made it a little more apparent when you're working on a template document. It'll be in the title bar. It'll also be on the uh, document items window as well. It'll say quote template. And we also added the functionality to add multiple bundles to a quote at once. Um, and these are actually feature suggestions from the QuoteWorks User Summit that we had last week. Because uh, this would, um, this is what's going to, um, so this is just an example of us, you know, taking those feature suggestions really seriously uh, that we're actually going to add them to the document or add them to the installation. Uh, as always, we have a ton of resources on the website. So if you do have questions, need any help, definitely feel free to give us a call send us an email, we're always happy to help, we're here to help. Um, we do have a ton of videos on the website, so if you have questions about specific features, definitely check out some of the vid videos. Uh, we try to keep those up to date as much as possible. And as always, our help file is always available, has everything you could possibly want to know about Coworks uh, in the help file, so definitely um, check that out as well. And this is also where we post our live and recorded webinars, as well as our um, users form is also um, a great place to look for information as well. We get that question a lot about, um, you know, if we have a forum. So definitely check out the users forum. It's a great place to interact with other Quartworks users, bounce ideas, that type of thing. And then if you're not following us on social media, make sure you uh, check us out on Facebook, Twitter, YouTube, LinkedIn, you know, follow us, um, like our page, all that good stuff. Um, that way you'll be notified. Um, we, try to stay pretty active on there. Um, anytime we have like new new videos or webinars coming up or events coming up or where we're gonna be, um, new features that we're releasing, things like that, um, we try to post as much as we can. So uh, definitely check that out. It's a great place to get uh, kind of up to the minute information on what we're working on, what we're looking at doing with, uh, with QuoteWorks. Okay, so let's go ahead and switch over to QuoteWorks now. update our page here. So, all right, so we're in QuoteWorks now. So the first thing we're gonna start with is going to be the Zoho integration. So what I'm gonna do is click on Contacts, set up Contact Manager, and then if you don't have Zoho CRM selected, go ahead and select it, and then click on Zoho Setup. And mine is obviously already set up, but we can walk through the, um, the setup since it's pretty straightforward and simple. Uh, basically, the completion of deal to one this is asking when QuoteWorks can, when you convert a QuoteWorks uh, document to an order, do you want us to update the uh, deal to one in Zoho? Uh, if you want us to do it when we're converting to an order, you'll have this first selection. If you want us to do it when you're converting to an invoice, if you're using QuoteWorks invoices, you can do that. Uh, if you want a little more control where maybe there's other, you know, internal processes that need to happen first before that document is marked as one, you can mark it as never and then we won't update the opportunity as one. Um, I think for most of you that are gonna be using this integration, you'll want to have QuoteWorks um, automatically update it when converting to an order. Um, if you wanna use the profit amount versus the sale amount in the deal, so by default, we use the amount of the document itself, um, but if you wanna use the profit amount, how much you're actually making on the document in the, uh, the deal instead, you can definitely do that. And then uh, if you wanna update the Zoho deal name with the document name, so instead of um, using the um, you know, the default macros that we set in QuoteWorks. If you want to use the document name instead, you can do that. And then setting up the Zoho CRM integrations can be really, really easy. You're just going to choose, in this case, mine's already set up, but you would choose request user access to Zoho. That'll bring you to the Zoho login screen. And you just need to tell, you just need to log into Zoho using your credentials. And then it'll ask you if you want to give QuoteWorks access to Zoho. You choose accept, and then it'll, you'll get a confirmation page and then you can test your connection, make sure you're connected and you'll be good to go. Uh, now, one important step is that each user in your installation will also need to do this, but they're gonna do it in different spots. So first step when you're setting up the Zoho integration is set it up where I just did under your contacts, set up contact manager. The next step is each user needs to log into QuoteWorks and go to tools and then my preferences and then click on the contact manager tab and then there's a manage user access to Zoho. Click on that and then it basically just brings them to the same screen where they 
they're going to um, put in their Zoho credentials, log in, give access, and then they'll be set to go. So it's, um, just make sure you um, you have that. So it's basically kind of a two-step um, setup. It's set it up under the contact setup manager, and then go to tools, my preferences, contact manager tab, and set it up there. Uh, the instructions are in chapter nine of the help file. So if you have if, um, questions about that or need help, you can do that. Okay. So using the Zoho integration, uh, we follow kind of the same formula that we use for our integrations to make things really, really simple for you. So first step is always to search for a contact or an account to pull into the document. So we're gonna click on our sold to ship to tab, and then we'll click on our search for contact window here. And you'll see here, this will bring up our lookup Zoho CRM contact window. And then you'll be able to search by name, phone, account name, account phone, contact first or last name, and contact phone number. So we'll do account name and we'll type in our example. I think we have some sample data in here we can use. So we do. So we'll go ahead and we'll select the contact that we want to pull into QuoteWorks and you can pull them in using the sold to, ship to, bill to, or all fields. All will just populate them across all three. Um, it doesn't have an email address saved in our sample data, so I'm just going to go ahead and put one in here just so we have it for our document. Copy that over. So once you've pulled your contact into the document, um, you're ready to start building the document. Uh, one thing to note is the sold to is still the default contact field for the integration. So this is who we're gonna create the deal for in Zoho. So just keep that in mind when you are uh, pulling your contact in. You always want who you wanna create that deal for set as a sold to. Uh, so I already have my document created uh, just to help speed things up uh, for the purposes of the webinar. So once you're done building your document in QuoteWorks, ready to start the integration with Zoho. So we'll click on the save icon here. And this will bring up our save code as window so we can give our document a name, our document number, status, project number, all those normal fields. And then our Zoho integration will be here. So you can see we're gonna create a new link document which will just be like a shortcut back to the QuoteWorks document. And then we're going to create or attach to a deal in Zoho. Um, you do have the option to switch your status to offline. So if you are not going to make it uh, for some reason, um, you know, maybe you're creating the document and you're losing your internet access or whatever it is, um, switching it to offline will allow you to still save your document so you don't lose your work in QuoteWorks, uh, but it just won't integrate with Zoho until you have internet access again, and then you can just switch yourself to back um, online. So we'll click OK. So the first thing it's going to do is save our document in QuoteWorks, and then it'll prompt us to create this new Zoho deal. By default, it's gonna start with creating a new one, but if you did want to link to an existing deal, you can click on the drop down and see a list of the deals that are available to link to for that contact. And then you can select that contact and we can link to it. Now, one thing to keep in mind is, is that if you are going to link to an existing deal, we are going to take ownership of that deal. So that means that that deal will essentially be wiped clean and then we're going to rewrite all the information into it. So just keep that in mind. Um, if you're using those existing deals as like placeholders, then QuoteWorks can come in here and absolutely link to it and it won't be a problem. But if you're actually putting in data, just know that it's going to be completely overwritten by what we set up here in this deal. So just keep that in mind. Uh, this is going to be our deal name. As you can see, we're just using the naming convention for our document. And then we can go through and set some of the um, options here, such as the owner, what the next step is, stage. So if we want to set the stage to value proposition, uh, type. Closing date, probability, lead source, campaign source, and any notes, you can add those as well. On the attachments tab, this is where you can attach additional documentation. So if you wanted to include more information or if there's just other um, sales documents you wanted to include as part of the deal, you can add them from the links tab. You can choose add files or you can drag and drop them here and we'll actually attach those to the deal in Zoho. Um, I have had a couple questions about the um, linking documents to Zoho and the size of it. Um, Quartz doesn't have a, a size limit, um, but Zoho might. So it just kind of depends on, you know, the size of the document that can be linked to Zoho is, is going to be strictly dependent on um, Zoho size limits, which unfortunately I'm not aware of, but um, I'm sure they could tell you if you, uh, if you ask. Um, but normal size documents should be fine because we haven't had any uh, complaints about it or any uh, questions about it. So, um, okay. So I've saved my document, we've created our deal. Now one of the really cool features about this integration in QuoteWorks is that you're able to link directly to the Zoho deal. Okay. 
and you can link directly to that deal just by clicking on the View Deal in Soho CRM on the Links tab in QuoteWorks. And this will actually bring you to the Zoho CRM deal details. And this will show you kind of where you are. And you can see it's just populating all the information that came over from QuoteWorks, our contact person, all our deal owner stage probability, all that information. And then down at the bottom, you'll see the stage history information. And then if we scroll further, we'll actually see the contact roles. And then there's that attachments that we talked about. And if you had included any additional attachments, those would be included here as well. So everything looks good. Let's say you send it out to the customer. Customer signs off on the document. They're ready to move forward. Um, so the next step is to convert this quote to an order. Uh, in the meantime, uh, anytime you send out a quote to a customer, if they come back and they ask you to make any adjustments or changes, you can easily do that. And when you do that and you hit save, QuoteWorks will prompt you to update the existing deal. So you'll see that you'll actually be prompted. So don't worry if you need to create multiple revisions of a document. We'll always remind you to update the deal with the latest information that the customer has requested. That way your data is always synced properly and everything is um, copacetic moving forward. Uh, okay, so everything looks good there. So we're ready to move forward and place this order. So we're gonna go to our file menu here, choose convert to order. And this will prompt us to convert our quote to an order. And when you um, convert your quote to an order, QuoteWorks will then automatically open up the deal window in Zoho or in QuoteWorks for Zoho, and it will let you know that we want to close this Zoho deal as one. Again, if we need to adjust like the owner or steps or anything like that, we can do that. You'll see that the stage is going to be set to close or to one, uh, probability set to 100, and the closing date set. And then if you want to add any additional notes before you update it, you can. Um, this way you can be 100% sure that everything in this quote is going to um, match what's in Zoho and then we'll hit OK. And then that'll actually update the Zoho deal information there. So um, really, really easy to use integration, really, really easy um, to set up. So like I said, if any of you are on professional or corporate of QuoteWorks and you have Zoho or you're migrating to Zoho, you'll have access to it because it will work with any of the Zoho integrations. Okay, so let's move on to the next step here. Uh, the next one we wanna talk about is the Amazon product source. We're gonna click on our products icon here. So again, this is gonna be for US customers and you do have to have an Edelize subscription with us. Um, so you need the real-time module and Edelize in order to use this integration. Uh, if you are using um, the real-time module and Edelize and you don't see this, uh, we can actually update it for you um, or there's a setting that you can actually activate it, uh, which I'll show you here in just a minute. But this is where you can set the, uh, this is where you can see the Amazon uh, product source. And then we can search for a specific item. So you can type in like a manufacturer part number, vendor part number, product description, keyword, really however you wanna look for an item, you can do that. Uh, what we can do here um, is it's very similar to the Edelize search. So if you put in just kind of basic information, so let's do uh, Logitech mouse, hit enter on our keyboard. This is gonna load quite a few items, but we'll see the first 50. And if we go to like this item here, you'll see a couple things. First one I wanted to show you is if you right click on any of these items, you'll see all the way at the bottom here, there's an option that says view item URL. When you click on this, this will actually open up this item on the Amazon page. So you can actually see one, make sure it is the right item, check pricing, things like that. So you'll actually be able to, you'll see and have access to all of that information go back into QuoteWorks, you'll see if we scroll to the right, there's a is prime eligible uh, column. So we'll actually let you know that this item is prime eligible and you'll be able to see that. And if you double click on the item, you'll actually see the item's picture and you'll be able to add it to your document. Now, one of the really cool features about this is if you are searching for an item in this Amazon product list, but you also want to check like tech data, Ingram Micro, Cinex, CNH, you don't have to leave and go and Edelize and search. What you can do is just turn on the Edelize panel and then we'll click on this item here. And if this item is sold by any of these other distributors, it'll actually show up in Edelize and then you can cross-reference pricing and availability with those other distributors right from one screen. So you can actually see, hey, I get better pricing from Amazon, so I wanna go ahead and source it from Amazon. Um, so you can see like tech data, they have it in stock. Um, you can even check CDW and Dell, um, since we already have Amazon up, to see what they're selling uh, the particular item for. 
And then when you click on it, you can actually see if the item's in stock or not as well. So it's a nice little feature um, kind of built into the Amazon product lookup window here, where you'll be able to always cross-reference your items with Amazon before you add it to the document. And then once you're ready to add it to the document, just use the same way as before with the Add Item Assistant. You can also take advantage of the comparison window where we can actually add it to the compare window in Eatalyze and QuoteWorks so you can compare multiple items at once. So um, pretty powerful functionality. Uh, like I said, this is only available if you have an Eatalyze subscription and for US customers only at this time. Um, at some point we may look at expanding it, uh, but right now it is only gonna be for US users. Okay. So I'm sure some of you, as I've been going through a couple of the new features, have uh, looked at my documents bar at the top. So there's a couple uh, couple cool features um, that I wanted to mention. Uh, one of them is just the ability to kind of switch through the documents. Um, this is really useful because I can see a list of all the documents that I have open, and then I can cycle through them pretty simply. Um, and all I have to do is actually click on the document itself, and it'll open up that new document for me to view. Uh, one of the really cool features about this integration or this feature is that you can also use keyboard shortcuts. So for instance, if I hold control on my keyboard and click tab, it'll actually let me tab through multiple documents. So it's a nice little shortcut. If you want to just kind of quickly get to a specific document, you can use these keyboard shortcuts to do that. Additionally, um, we've made it really, really easy to open up multiple documents in the same window so that you can easily copy and paste or compare and contrast documents against each other. So for example, let's say I had my, um, my setup and installation document open right here, and I wanted to compare it to my Zoho example. What I can do is hold control on my keyboard, click on my Zoho example, and QuoteWorks will automatically open two documents next to each other, and that would make it really, really easy for me to copy and paste between the documents. Now, my document, uh, or my QuoteWorks window is already maximized, but if it wasn't maximized, I could hold control and shift click on the document window, and it'll maximize both documents and my QuoteWorks window. So um, control will just open them in the uh, you know, same size window you already have QuoteWorks open to. Uh, if you hold control, shift, and then click on the document, it'll maximize everything. So some really, really cool functionality and um, some really cool features there with the documents bar. All right, um, so the QuickBooks integration update. So let's uh, just maximize this document here. So the QuickBooks um, integration updates, uh, like I said, there's a couple things going on here. So the first one is going to be when you click on the QuickBooks, export to QuickBooks window here, and this is for if you're using QuickBooks Desktop or QuickBooks Online, uh, this window is now non-modal, which means you don't have to close it or um, your documents to get there before. When you're getting ready to export, it would prompt you saying, hey, you need to close all these uh, other documents before you can do that. Now you don't have to do that, so a um, little, little helpful tip there. Um, and then what I wanted to talk about earlier was the feature we talked about in the PowerPoint presentation was if you go to your setup here, and this will just take a second to uh, load our setting, and then go to the mapping tab, and then the item sub tab, down here at the bottom is a checkbox that says convert grouped items to a single item. Um, and this setting has been here for a while. It's um, a pretty common feature in QuoteWorks. It's been around for as long as I can remember. And basically what it does is when you have a bundle on a document, it will allow you to convert those into a single kind of rolled up item. If you leave it unchecked, then instead of the item going over as that rolled up item, it'll, QuoteWorks will send over the individual items to QuickBooks instead. Uh, now, while that's a really, really useful feature, um, it can cause a little confusion. So if we go over here to our silver package option, you'll see here we have our group header. So we have our bundle here. And if we export this, I, this document to QuickBooks without the option checked, it's gonna send over the individual items. So they're gonna send over, um, but they won't have, they won't be grouped together. But what we've done is we added a new feature. So if we go open QuickBooks here, so you can see my document has been exported over to QuickBooks. You can see we actually exported the description of the header line as a comment in QuickBooks. So this way, whatever you put in as that uh, group header for your bundle or your group, you'll actually see that information in QuickBooks. So we're just providing you a little bit more information. Now, if you decide to go the other route where you have this grouped 
uh, this bundle here, this group, and you export this over to QuickBooks. When you export it over to QuickBooks, go to the next one here, as a single item, QuoteWorks will actually take the description of all the individual items and include them in the single description item that's sent over to QuickBooks. This way you know exactly what was quoted when you're sending it out to the customer. So it just provides you a little bit more information, really, really easy to uh, make sure that you have all the information that you need and that's being sent from QuoteWorks to QuickBooks so everything uh, matches up, just makes your life a little easier. All right, um, so kind of on the same tune with um, the QuickBooks, we have our purchasing window here that we also made non-modal. And this is where we talked about um, being able to minimize it. So before you would have had to close all your open documents in QuoteWorks, you don't have to do that anymore as is evidenced by the documents I still have open in my installation. Um, and then we did add some functionality. Uh, one of the biggest ones was if you go to the purchase orders tab, being able to adjust the serial number. So if you had marked an item as received and copy and pasted the serial number, maybe you left off a digit, maybe you put in the wrong serial number, you received the wrong item or something like that, now you can easily change it. All you need to do is hold shift on your keyboard, click on the serial number, so bring up the serial number action window and you can choose whether you want to edit it or you can delete the serial number and um, unreceive the item. So mark the item is not received yet. Um, so for instance, if I just wanted to edit it, I can come in here and then we can say, oh, you know, this was supposed to be 754 and just update that. Click OK and it'll update that serial number. You also see it doesn't change your receive date, so it won't change the receive date unless you unreceive it. So you can go in there and make sure you have the correct information. So um, a nice little feature there. Uh, we also have the option to um, remove the fulfillment item record. So you'll see that here. Uh, this will basically mark as the item was not fulfilled, was not received. Um, so you can uh, you can update that kind of as necessary as needed. And then on our ordered items tab, we have a couple new fields available. Uh, specifically, your customer PO number is now a searchable field. So we added that so that if you wanted to search for specific items from a customer PO number that you, you're referencing, you can search for that here. Um, and same thing, if you want to search for a specific item based on the serial number, uh, you can do that also. So we just added some new fields to this ordered items tab. That makes things a little bit easier there. And then finally, on the purchasing tab, uh, we do support the ability to uh, move your columns around. So you can actually drag and drop your columns and choose which order you want them to be in. Uh, and that'll be for your installation so that you can kind of have you know the important columns a little bit easier to uh, see and view instead of having to scroll to the right every time you have them. All right, and then in Quote Ballet, I uh, just wanted to show, um, it's a pretty quick feature, but wanted to show this feature, the show activity feature here. So you can see there's the checkbox for it. So every time you click on a notification in Quote Ballet, it loads all the activity history for that particular document. Well, if you're going through and you're saying, okay, you know what, I'm pretty much done with these. I, I wanna kind of dismiss some of these activities. What I can do is uncheck this, and then I can actually click on these activities very quickly and I can go through and decide if I need to adjust or dismiss them or um, if it needs my attention or not. So uh, it's just a nice little feature and this will remember your previous selection. So if you uncheck it, every time you come into your inbox, it'll be unchecked until you check it again or vice versa. If it was unchecked, but you want it checked, you can leave it checked and it'll remember that last selection. So uh, it's a nice little feature to use just kind of speed up the process of kind of moving between your notifications in Quote Valley, especially if you're responsible for kind of clearing out others' dashboards and you just want to get um, rid of the, uh, you know, the like important ones or the ones that have already been um, handled. You can quickly do that for other users as well. Okay, uh, and then we have some some kind of smaller features. Um, again, these are actually a couple features, um, quite a few of these actually, that came from the Coworks User Summit that we had um, just last month, uh, where we had a request, when you are editing a template to make it a little bit more apparent that you're working on a template. So we always had the T for the document type in there. Um, so if it's a quote, it's a Q, if it's an order, it's an O, if it's a template, it's a T. Um, but we, um, we had a request to actually make this stand out a little bit more to make it more prominent. So we've done a couple things here. First one is that we've added the word template to the end of the document name so that you know that you're working in a template here in the title bar. 
we also added the word template over here on the document indicator on your document items tab. Uh, so if we go to a regular document here, you'll see it's an order and it's a quote template. So just a quick little feature there. So you can quickly glance at it and see, hey, I'm working in a template. That way you don't spend too much time like customizing it if you thought you were working in a quote, because I know that does happen. Um, so this should make it a little easier to kind of see that. Um, we also added a indicator. Um, we'll actually turn the word quote red um, if the document is expired. So anytime you see a quote that has a red lettering here, that just means that that document has expired and you'll just want to update the expiration date on the document. So those were a couple of features that came directly from the user summit and we were able to implement in less than a month actually. So um, that's pretty cool. And then let's see, a um, couple new My Preferences settings. Uh, so these are really, really useful. Um, so if you go to Tools, My Preferences, and then you click on the Miscellaneous tab here, this will bring you to your miscellaneous preferences. And this is a per user setting. So you can change these just for yourself. You can change them for other users if you like. Um, but this is specifically to who you're logged in as in QuoteWorks. But we added the ability to do a couple things. Uh, one of the first ones was enable the autosave. You can actually set the duration of when the um, autosave is happening. So I have mine set for four minutes, but you can have it set for one minute. Maybe you want to make sure you're never missing anything. Uh, maybe you just want it to be like every 15, 20 minutes for it to run. Whatever you want to set it to, you can you can do that here and just change the setting. And like I said, this is a per user setting, so it's just going to be for yourself. Um, we also have the option to prompt for bundle quantity and configurator quantity. So when you're adding a bundle to the document or when you run through the configuration wizard and you're adding that configuration, you're getting ready to add it as a um, onto your document, uh, you'll now be prompted to uh, set the quantity for that configuration. So just some smaller features that can really make it easier to um, to just kind of speed up your process because that's essentially what we're trying to do is just make things a little, a little more streamlined, a little easier for you. Um, and then for those of you that are using um, the last one actually is going to be for MS CRM users. If you are using MS CRM as your CRM, uh, we did add support in the data link for line items. Um, so if you go to your um, MS CRM setup, click on data link setup, and click on items, you'll see MS CRM is now one of the supported options here. So we can actually update information in QuoteWorks or in MS CRM. Um, from items, uh, from item related information, either in QuoteWorks or into MS CRM. So, uh, for more information on that, uh, definitely check out the help file or just send us an email. Um, you know, we'd be happy to take care of that for you. All right. Well, I think that's everything we wanted to cover today. Um, I do see quite a few questions. Uh, so for those of you that um, posted a question, just hang tight and uh, I'll start going through those here in the next few minutes. Uh, for those of you that don't have any other questions or don't have any questions, um, thank you for attending. Uh, if you do have questions or you just want to hear some of the questions, feel free to hang out. Uh, if there's anything I didn't get to that you wanted to see or have questions about, definitely just let us know. Feel free to send us an email or give us a call. We'd be happy to answer anything for you. So uh, for those of you that have questions, just hang tight. Um, everybody else, thanks for coming and have a great rest of your day.